Hey, hey, welcome back. Welcome back, Fonzie. I mean, you've been out for like three three episodes. So just you were about to say bit. three years. Almost. <laughs> <laughs> well, what do we talk about today? We had an incredible guest. Yes, our guest, uh, one of my favorites in this specific topic. And uh, we're honored to have her. Um, that She shared a little bit of like, why your English teacher screw you over. Oh, yes, a good one. that was pretty good. She also shared a little bit about how to never run out of ideas. And not just in her medium, but whatever medium you're publishing in, which is incredible. I know. We're like typing notes like crazy. F fire out of our fingers was coming out. But mm. another thing that she shared is like, should you be turning your sales letter into a book? Mm. Is that a, a hashtag golden boulder or is that a hashtag a mistake? Hashtag no, no. Hashtag no, no. <laughs> no, no. Well, let's just jump in and figure it out. All right. See you there. See you there. Yeah. And then all, the, all my clients were like, can you write a book? And I'm like sure I can write a book, you know, and I have to figure out how, but I, I did, I, I had written a book. It took me 16 years to write my first book. Wow. Second book I had to write in a week. He, he, he does. It's all about your PP. <laughs> they always remember it. Always. always. They will never forget pleasure and pain. Yeah. We've got hey, I'm Luis. And this is Luis. And welcome yeah, to the content is profit before. podcast. Huh. In here, you're going to get the insights, accountability, and drive to create consistently and increase revenue. You'll hear from top entrepreneurs, creators, and anything and everything you need to know about content. All this while having a damn good time, baby. The goal of this podcast is simple to entertain, educate, and turn your content into profit. That is right. Welcome back, Fonzie. After Appreciate three episodes. It. I'm glad you're, I, you're alive. That sounds way longer than it actually is. It was just a week. Three yeah, episodes. Like <laughs> hey, for some people, that can be a month. You know? I know, but By somebody way. that's tuning in, they're going to be like, whoa, three episodes. That we record three episodes in a week. <laughs> well, that, that is a week. Uh, yeah. Anyways, Fonzie, what are we talking about today? Tell me. Guys, today, I'm very excited about today's guest. I, I am too. It's something that I've dealt with internally <laughs> for a while, but we're going to be, you know, trying to find, extract, and implement your genius Ooh. so you better grab pen and paper because you're gonna be writing a lot pun intended you're gonna see why <laughs> uh but you better be taking notes today <laughs> yes if you are listening and you're enjoying this show please go ahead and hit the follow button on your favorite podcasting platform it does help the show it helps our guests it helps you because it reminds you every single Tuesday, Thursday, and Saturday, as long as Fonzie hits the publish button, uh, that this content is coming out to you and uh, you can you can get momentum in your life, in your business, in everything. That is right. Not just hit it, smash it. <laughs> smash it with everything you got, guys. And if today's <laughs> guest helped you move one step closer towards your goal, please don't forget to share this episode and, and leave a five-star review. That's right. So I hope you're ready to buckle up because we're together again and we have greatness in today's podcast. Oh, yeah. Have you ever wondered... Who these ghost writers are? The real magicians behind some of your favorite books. Mm, well, today's guest is one of those ghostly writers. She has written for legends like Russell Branson, Amanda Holmes, Alex Sharfin, and maybe even you. Who knows? After all, she is a ghost. Please welcome <laughs> the one and only Julie Eason. <laughs> Joy, I was even thrown out by that intro, okay? Like, I got all crazy uh, things hey. in here in the control. Like, honestly, I feel now, I feel like I need to put makeup on or, or maybe a no, 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 over no. my head or something. No, 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 no. We, we, oh. we need to show your greatness, Julie. That's right. We need you're, to show your greatness. You're stepping out from the ghostly world into, you know, the real physical world over here. Yeah, Julie, welcome I to the show. You. Welcome to the show. You uh, you know, we've interacted for quite a bit now and I'm super excited to have this conversation. We work in a couple projects together and uh yeah, I I cannot wait to to deep dive into content and and writing and all these amazing things that you do so so well. <laughs> oh, I love it. I love it. Is this yeah, so it's a, it's really funny because people think that I, I'm only a writer, I only write, and really it comes, when they find, when they, when they talk to me, it's like, oh my God, no, wait, we're talking strategy, we're talking frameworks, we're talking about how to beat procrastination and overwhelm and imposter syndrome, like there's so many different things we can talk about, so I can't wait yeah. to dive in and hear what you guys are curious about. So oh, yeah, it's going to be absolutely amazing. I'm just going to throw this out there before we start diving in the questions. Just so, you know, the listener right now is going to be like... Why, why should I listen today? And I, I just want you to brag for a little bit, you know, like one minute. Please share with people which kind of books have you written? Because if they go to your website, they're going to be like, wow, I cannot believe this thing. 
So, so what you're saying? Brag away. Now. Brag, brag away. Brag away. Bragging time. So, so the, one, the books that, that you're probably most familiar with in this particular audience is um, Expert Secrets and Dotcom Secrets. And we wrote those books. I wrote those books um, as a ghostwriter for Russell Brunson. And I have all kind of, if you really are curious about the behind the scenes and all the crazy stuff that goes on, there's a, there's a whole interview on my website about we, we were jamming back and forth about it. Um, I've written books for, I helped Amanda Holmes. She's coming out with the second edition of the Ooh. Ultimate Sales. Yes. 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 Life changing and amazing. I mean, it, it was already one of the top 10 re most recommended sales books of all time. And now it's going to be like the, the top one top most one. recommended sales and marketing books of all time, because it's, mm. it's what we did to that book was, was amazing. So, um, some other books you might recognize, uh, entrepreneurial personality type EPT from Alex Sharfin. Um, wow. And my own book, the profitable business author, which, yes. which I love which gives you all the, the behind the scenes, how you actually do it step by step. How do you create a book that inspires, educates and sells so that it's not just, I mean, there's a million almost 2 million now books published every year because you can just up it. Yeah. Right? And, and the problem is, is that it's great that everybody can publish now, but everybody can publish now. And it's like, there's a lot of bad stuff getting published. Yeah. Do and I, have, I have so many people come to me and, and they're always saying, Oh my God, I, I, I wrote a book, but it's really bad. And I don't tell anybody about it. So <laughs> we fix that. Wow. Julie, I'm just going to say this. You just re rewrote a core memory that I had in my brain, right? One of oh, the, cool. yeah, <laughs> one of the very like first business books that I, that I read was uh, dot com secrets. Like actually mm -hmm. that was the book literally that kind of like drove me into this whole online marketing world. I was like, whoa, this is so exciting. It was such a well-written book. I'm not kidding. Like when I was reading this, my thought process was like, wow. Like anybody can do this. Like it's so easily laid out in here. Right. Like anybody not, can. Not do anybody this can thing. write a good book. Anybody can like do business, right? Is it, that what you mean? I mean, I think the combination between the, <laughs> the writing, obviously, with you know the knowledge that you extracted from Russell, right, to put all that together in there, was was laid out the perfect way. But my core memory was that at that time I was working for this company called happy feed we were coaching soccer little kids and i remember i was waiting to go into one of the schools to coach and i was sitting in panda express reading <laughs> the book and i was like man like that was the day that i was like this makes yeah. so much sense and this orange yeah. chicken is so freaking good yeah. <laughs> but i am motivated right now i need to you know build my funnel all this stuff you know that he talks in right. dotcom secret so now you rewrote the core memory instead of thinking about russell i'm gonna be thinking about you julie <laughs> oh, thank you. Well, you can think about russell too he's, he's an amazing human being absolutely um, and it's really funny because when you when you say it was so clear so it's it's there's an old saying in writing that says you know damn easy writing is damn hard writing like it's easy reading is hard writing and that really is true because people, people think, I mean, even Russell came to me and said, Oh, I have a webinar. Just, we're just going to transcribe it and, and, you know, we'll tweak it a little bit and we'll, and we'll put it out there. Cause he was, he was in a rush like everybody else. Yeah. People just really want to be, they want their book. They want it done. They want it out there. They have no idea how long it takes. They have no idea how, how good it could really be because they've got yeah. so much genius inside them, but they don't know the, the frameworks and the structures and the ways to pull it out and lay it out on paper so that the genius actually shines. And the reason that those particular books have been so successful for ClickFunnels is because you actually get some freaking results, right? Like you actually can yeah. build an amazing business off of one, two, or, or even all three of those books. And yeah. they're, they're, they're the real deal. They're not just, you know, a webinar that's been transcribed and uploaded to Amazon. Yeah. Julie, like how, like what set you on the path of uh, writing and producing content in, in that very specific way, right? Like for us, we have a very unique uh, story on how we started podcasting and there's a reason we do podcasting. It's like the one form of content that we are actually consistent, right? Like we, we like to talk a lot. <laughs> that's it. And, uh, <laughs> and we're always... <laughs> we're obviously a big fan of this platform right and uh, obviously the book idea has come we have frameworks around it and we're like okay what now maybe we have some material that we can write something up but like i'm very curious like in your journey like how did you start was it by accident was it you were you very passionate about that medium uh, no 
I mean, I love books. I, I've, I've been a reader my whole life and I used to write stories for people for, for birthday presents and things because I didn't have any money. So I was mm. like, oh, I'll write you a story and, and they love that. Um, but no, I was, I was pregnant and wanted to stay home with my kids. And, and I was like, well, what can I do? And I was reading magazine articles and going, well, shoot, I can write better than that. And so I sort of fell into journalism and then nine 11 happened and that entire industry collapsed because all the newspapers and magazines were trying to go online, but they didn't know how to monetize because the word monetize wasn't even a thing then this is in the nineties. And yeah. so I, I figured out copywriting. And I figured people pay me great money to, to, to write sales copy and things like that. That was fun. And then, you know, the internet started exploding and websites yeah. and webinars and all the, all the fun things that we do. My clients would send me to these, these digital, it wasn't even called digital marketing then. It wasn't even called anything. It was just, but it was digital marketing conferences. And, you know, I'm sitting in the audience with people like Frank Kern and Allie Brown and people who are like old, old school, like they're, they're yeah. the top of their game. <laughs> and I'm like, you know, <laughs> This is a million years ago, but um, they, my, my clients would send me to the conferences. So I learned and learned and learned. And I, that's one of my favorite things to do is just to learn new stuff. And that's the best part of ghostwriting is that you get to learn all the cool stuff for free because you have to learn it in order to write about it. Yeah. <laughs> so, yeah. And then all the, all my clients were like, can you write a book? And I'm like, sure, I can write a book, you know, and then I have to figure out how, but I, I did. <laughs> I, I had written a book. It took me 16 years to write my first book. Wow. Second book I had to write in a week. Wow. It was, it was for a locksmith and a security expert, and it was right after uh, the Sandy Hook school shooting. And so, like, he had a big ra national radio interview coming up, and he's like, I need a book to, to give to people. And so I was like, sure, <laughs> we'll figure it out. And that's actually, that's where I figured out the process for writing a book quickly and efficiently and actually getting out the information that needs to be, to yeah. be out there. Uh, so really it was just, I fell into it because my clients needed it. And then I started publishing because they were screwing up the book publishing process. <laughs> I was like, oh my God, we wrote this amazing book and look at that cover and look at, oh my God, what are you doing? So I like learned how to publish as well. <laughs> wow. Well, how, how much caffeine do you have in that week? <laughs> I, I, the whole thing was written at Starbucks, so I could not even <laughs> begin to tell you. Um, I had to get out of the house. I had to write while the kids were in school. Fortunately, all three kids were in school at the time. And so I just had mm. a few hours every day and I just wrote my brains out. But the, the secret was in learning how to develop a question-based outline, which is what I, I teach in um, The Profitable mm. Business Author. It's the most brilliant way to get ideas out of your head and to make sure that you can make progress on the book, even if yeah. you don't feel like it, even if you're procrastinating, even if you only have 10 minutes sitting in the car waiting for your kid to get out of soccer practice, you can still make progress when you use this question-based outline format. Yeah. Uh, can, can, can we dive a little bit into that? Because hold I on. think Maybe. this could be... One second, one second. No, 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 uh, no. Choke the mic, Fonzie. Come no, on. No. Okay, we, we, can put a, we can put a tab in it, but I think this could be so beneficial for uh, yeah. anybody regardless you're gonna any write a book content. or you're gonna create any sort of content just because yep. coming up with the ideas and you know the frameworks how you're gonna deliver those ideas is key i i, I truly believe that that is like 80 percent of the work because a lot of people are stop they don't produce anything because they just think what am i gonna right. say right once right. they have that what am i gonna say and they know exactly what they're gonna say then they just need the how they're gonna say it and then at the end you know yeah take the action of actually creating the piece of content. So I, I want to go there, but hold on because we're about to bring out the, the, the boxing gloves over here. This is like amazing. I just want to put some boxing gloves. <laughs> What's happening? What's happening? <laughs> I mean, clearly he was, he was absent for three episodes and now he thinks he owns the mic. Uh, <laughs> I mean, what can we do? Uh, no, Julie, I mean, yes, absolutely. I want to go there, right? P part of the follow-up question was that, but I really want to highlight something here where you mentioned just like that, be like, my first book was 15 years and the next one a week. And I, I think like it's so important. Like one of the big elements, right, is you got a deadline. This guy came to you and be like, I need this like yeah. in a week. And I remember yeah. one of the initial like business lessons that I ever consumed in a conference was like you got to put a date in your calendar and then allow that day to like pull you forward right because yes. and that to me resonated so much because i was having such a hard time at the moment to execute what, what i was executing at the time and it was very similar with the podcast we're like we're actually doing our first episode in like tomorrow right Be and and we have no time to like procrastinate mm -hmm. and figure this thing out it's like how are we actually going to publish it and we recorded the first 20 episodes and as we were going we decided to do this process that 
that evolve into the business and, and what we do today. So I think that lesson alone is so massive for a lot of people, right? When it comes to like creating something, we had a we, we're helping two people right now on the back end of like their shows. This amazing, brilliant businesswoman, right in in the in the real estate, and she's like, I have this message. I want to get out. How long have you tried to get this out? Two years. We're like, what? Years. years. And, uh, two years. And I'm like, oh my gosh. Okay, well, you know what? Why don't you record like this thing? And she sent like a pilot episode about 15 minutes. And uh, we uploaded everything. We're like, congrats. You have a podcast. And, and that's it, right? And we're like, okay. And now, you know, the next one. And then we, we put things in your calendar. So if you're listening right now, please, please take that, right? If you've been struggling with producing content, putting something out there, right? Make sure that you put that date in the calendar. Tell as many people as possible, we did. <laughs> We're like, hey, we don't yeah. care about some of that stuff, but putting that thing in front of you so you can pull you forward is so important. Now, let's dive into the- Can I put a caveat on that real yes. quick? Yes, yes. So according to neuroscience, I'm a, I'm a big Myers-Briggs um, geek, really, because I wrote a book for somebody who was an expert in Myers-Briggs. Um, and so for people who are, and if this, if you don't know what Myers-Briggs is, it's the personality type profile. It's, it's like the ENTPs and the IFP. JPs and those kinds of those kinds of four letters. Yeah. So if you don't know what it is, you can go look it up. But it, but if you do know what it is and you know which one you are, there's a very fine distinction between um, a feeling type and or I'm sorry, a judgment type and a and a perception type, which is the J's and the P's, which is the last letter. And for it's really interesting because there are certain personality types who have to have a deadline. Mm -hmm. Those are the P's. That was me, right? I have to have a deadline and that deadline has to have consequences. And I can set that deadline to be two weeks out, two months out, two years out, or two minutes out. And I will always meet that deadline no matter what it is, but I have to, I have to have one and it has to have actual consequences attached to it. So whenever I have a client, I'm always going to get my client work done. I'm not necessarily always going to get my own work done unless I have that deadline in place. So that's mm -hmm. one personality type, but the other one the, the J's, the judgment, my daughter is this, those are the people who love to-do lists. They love checklists. They yeah. love crossing things. They will make a to-do list. And the top thing is make a to-do list so that they can cross it off <laughs> because they feel like they're in momentum. They feel like they're yeah, yeah. gaining, um, they're gaining traction and they're, they feel good. They get dopamine and serotonin hits when they cross something off their list. So if you are a list maker, the deadline might be fine, but having a list is actually going to pull you forward more than the deadline. So just Ooh. knowing your personality type, and I teach this in, in learning your natural writing styles, because there's different ways that introverts and extroverts should be writing. And that's just, just knowing that it's like, oh, I could give a crap about, you know, calendars and, and checklists and things like that. But if I don't have a deadline, I'm never going to do the thing. Yeah. Is, is there like a third type, third hidden type in there? Because... I tried both and I'm like, man, I don't, you know, sometimes it one if works. One doesn't work, yeah. So if either one doesn't work, then you're, there's something else in the way. And, and that's, you know, I, I call them the five author freakouts, but there's, there's very <laughs> specific things that cause procrastination, overwhelm, self doubt, you know, all the, um, imposter syndrome, all of those kinds of things. That's, that's my most recent book. And it's all, it's all internal. It's like what's in your own way. It's all subconscious. It's like you have one foot, your brain is on, is on the gas, right? It wants to go, 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 but you can't make yourself do it. That means your subconscious has its foot on the brake and your subconscious always wins. Always. So you're saying I need to go to Peru on an ayahuasca trip. Is that what you're saying? Is that what I need to do? Yeah, well, you can if you want to, but it, there's a lot easier ways to do it. I think a very, yeah, I think a very easy way is to, yeah, I think a very easy way is to, to read Julie's book. Just gonna Absolutely. put that right we're gonna, By the way, we're going to leave the links right below. So all you got to do is scroll down and, and click on that and go get it. Go get it. Uh, Julie, it was funny because we were actually talking about this this morning. And we we're like, Fonzi, like all you talk about is travel. Why don't you just go travel? Like, just just go. We don't want you in the house anymore. Got to yep. spread my wings. <laughs> yep. and, so, and so why do you think that is? Um, I don't know because I want to get away from my brother. No, I'm kidding. <laughs> no, 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 no. Why do you want to travel? Why? Why do you think you 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 aren't like? Why are you not doing it? Ah, uh, man, that's a. Uh, you <laughs> see that that's a very <laughs> internal conversation I've been having. Actually, all right. Fun fact: we had the awesome Katie Richardson here on the podcast a while back, and I love her. yeah, she's amazing, and she was kind enough to give us a. Um, 
kind of like a coaching call after. She's like, I really like you guys. I'm going to, you know, jump on a call with you individually. So when I talked to her, you know, I share all my deepest and darkest problems. <laughs> and she was like, this is what I'm seeing. Now, this is very personal right now. But she is like, I see a man that is living in comfort, right? And yep. I'm, I'm obviously not explaining the context of my problems. But she was like, I see a man that is living in, in comfort. And I was like, ooh, okay, well, understand. Thank you. Um, and then I've had more people randomly, you know, close to me share that as well. And I was like, whoa, okay. So I'm clearly in my comfort zone and I'm like stuck in here. So I'm, seems like I am in a way somewhat afraid of stepping out of that comfort zone. Yep. You know, and it's not necessarily fear. It's your, it's your ego. It's your, it's your conscious mind and your subconscious mind are, are they're, they're fighting, right? You want to go, but your, your subconscious doesn't want you to go because you're safe right now. It's only job is to keep you safe. And right now, even if you're not meeting your goals, you're safe, you're alive, yeah. you're breathing, you have a roof over your head, your basic needs are met. And that's where it wants to stay. And so the way that you like get out of that, that conundrum is, is to literally talk to yourself. You can do it through meditation. You can do it through journaling. I love writing in my journal with two different color pens. And I literally have conversations back and forth oh, over, I, I sometimes good. fight, you know, it's like, what gives, why do you not want this to happen? Maybe if you, and it always comes down to identity, right? So it's, yeah. if you identify as somebody who's hardworking, who, you know, loves what they do and who gets results for people. And then all of a sudden you're traveling. If that breaks with your identity, you're always going to stick with who you think you are. I'm the hardworking guy that's always in the office at 8 a.m. I'm not the, the guy who travels and gets around to posting the podcast whenever I get around to it. So therefore, you're not going to allow yourself to get out of your comfort zone because you're not going to allow yourself to break with what you know is who you are. Yeah, absolutely. That makes sense? Yeah, yeah, absolutely. I mean, I obviously, I know you were just sharing an example, but I don't think they are, yeah. you know, I, you could be the guy that delivers and do all the work while traveling as well. I, I feel like, you know. No, yeah, you totally can. But yeah. you have to talk to your conscious and tell it that. Yeah. And say, so what about this? And, you know, be nice to it. Don't be mean because oh. that just makes it dig in harder. But, you know, ask it questions and say, can you get on board with this? Can you get on board with me taking know a two-week trip but we'll work on the trip would that be okay and you just have to get it to say yes yeah i was and about then, to say I'm, a, I'm gonna backhand slap it like we are going okay <laughs> <laughs> it never works that's willpower that's when you're trying to do yeah. willpower. And it's just, this goes with any content this goes with any monetization of content so a lot of people i'm a creator i love writing i love creating websites and i i can create you know a shopify store all day long but when it comes to actually talking about it and getting it out there and doing the marketing and, and being vulnerable to, to trolls and all of that, that yeah. is really hard for me. And so it, it's the same deal. Like you have to, you have to get both parts of you on board. Yeah. No matter what it is that you're trying to do, no matter what it is that, that where there's resistance holding you back because yeah. you're really the boss. If you understand that you have to get that and it's a little child, talk to it like it's five years old, yeah. you know, and you just, come on, let's go do this. It's going to be fun. Yeah, I love this. I I think this like through through our example, right? And Fonzie's example. Thank you, Fonzie, for sharing that, man. Like, yeah, you're welcome. I, I didn't know that. Yeah, yeah. Very horrible. Yeah. <laughs> uh, I, I think it's helping a lot of people, right? Because whether that's you know getting work done or publishing in the in the context of the podcast or launching something, right? I think we all face those those fears and monsters, and uh, it's it. These are amazing frameworks and tools that we can execute today, and it's gonna help you move things forward. So, thank you, Julie, for for sharing that. Uh, <laughs> should should we go back to where we left the tab and people hanging? Yes, you know, about the yes. question based Let's, outline. Question based outline. Here we go. Go, Julie. Go. All right. <laughs> so, a question based outline. Your brain. If, if you can't tell by now, I'm I'm a total neuroscience geek, and I love yeah. All, I love hacking the brain because. When I was a copywriter, I, that's all I wanted to do was figure out how I could write the exact words that would make people buy stuff. And it, it was like a it was like a challenge and I and I loved it. And then learning all of the nuances and the little th knobs that you can you can twiddle with mm. to make things more effective or faster or whatever you want more persuasive was really fun for me. So when I figured out I had to write this book in a week, I was like, all right, how can I not ever get stuck? Mm. And then I realized, oh, well, the answer to not ever getting stuck is the question. So the answer is always in the question, right? Mm. The, the, the questions trigger your brain 
to automatically search for an answer. If I go, you know, Luis, what does content for profit mean? You're going to rattle it off. You're not going to have any trouble telling me what it means, yeah. right? You're going to, you're going to be able, you could go on for three hours or, you know, 500 pages in a book of what it means and how you do it and all of those things. So when you look at an outline, the way we were taught to write in school, God help all the English teachers. Like I just, <laughs> I love English people, but you know, English teachers and, but my God, yeah. they, they really screw up. They screw us up because they, they're, they're focused on teaching one method that's going to get you to pass a test, which is great in school, but it's not helpful at all when you're trying to put out content of any kind. What's really helpful, especially in this 24 seven cycle that we have, we have to put it out and it has to be continuous and it has to be fresh and it has to be interesting. Yeah. The only way that you're going to get to where you're not going to stare at a blank page and freeze up is if you're looking at a question and you can turn anything into a question, mm. like anything, right? You can take content for profit or content is profit and just leave it as a bullet point and an outline. And you're like, oh God, where do I start? <laughs> um, okay. Well, we could, we could start with, what if you start with what is content? What is profit? How does, how does content relate into profit and how can I get content out more often? And, you know, you see how you can just ask mm -hmm. question after question, after question, after question, yeah. and you never run out of questions. Yep. There's only six in interrogative words, right? Who, what, when, where, why, how, and you're going to start with those words and then finish with whatever it is that you're trying to get across. So how does content translate into profit? Who should be writing your content? Who should be making sure that there's profit? Mm. When should you be get profiting on your content? Should it be right away or should it be, should you wait a little while? You know, like you just use those who, what, when, where, why, how, yeah. and you start with those words and you end with a question mark and then you can fill it in with anything. So good. And so when you create a question based outline, I start with, with higher level topics. So with a book, you want 10 to 20 high level topics. Mm -hmm. And I mean, we reverse engineer books when I do, I do book mostly book development now. So we're yeah. helping, you know, business people just do the beginning part. I don't do the ghostwriting anymore, but what we, we start with the end in mind, where are we trying to get people to go? What's their point A, what's their point B, especially with their mindset and their belief systems. And then we go with the high level topics. So Let's say I, I use the example that I, that I have in my book um, about a dog spa, right? Somebody who wants to start a dog grooming business. And I, I, this is such a funny story because I don't have a dog. I've never <laughs> been to a dog groomer. I have no idea, no idea about anything related to this topic whatsoever. But I created an outline in the book that I had people emailing me going, where do I get that book about the dog grooming? Because like my, my cousin That's really wants to start a business. Funny. And I, I, I'm like, it doesn't exist. I made it up. And I even say in the book, I made this up. This isn't real. <laughs> but I had like five or 10 people were like, how do I get that book? Yeah. And the way we did it, we went high level topics like um, education and business licensing and location and marketing and all the big topics. Right. And then, so under, mm. um, marketing say that's the chapter, then we go into, okay, how much marketing do we need? Do we need local marketing or do we need digital marketing? Where do we get it? How much money should we spend on it? And it's just, you just fill in all the questions underneath the high level topics. Yeah. yeah. And once you do that, you have a heck of an amazing outline that you can make pr progress on in 10 minutes at a time. Because if you're going to take more than 10 minutes to answer a question, you probably need to break that question down or you need to do some research because you don't really know what you're talking about. If you go, you know, you can't fill 10 minutes, then maybe you need to expand it. Maybe you don't. But like it's a good it's a good space. You also don't have to write in order. A lot of people start at page one and they get stuck because they don't know what they want to say in the introduction. I always write introductions last. Mm. Right. I, because there's a very specific format for an yeah. introduction and it's, it's pretty, it's pretty much the same for every business book. So you, st but when you have a question based outline, that's laid out in this particular way, you can do whatever lights your button that day, right? Like you can start in chapter seven, yeah. question two, or you can start in, in chapter two, question seven. It doesn't, it doesn't matter. You can bounce around. Yeah. Now, that doesn't mean that that entire book, you still want to insert stories. You want to insert, insert structure and flow and all of that. But if you're just creating a piece of content, I don't want to say just a piece of content because it, it's all content, right? Yeah. But if you're creating a shorter piece of content, whether it's a video or something that you're writing up for a blog post or whatever, 
if you can have a high level topic and three major questions and you can can you know talk about those three questions in depth you've got a really great blog post absolutely i think oh this was absolute <laughs> fire standing ovation um studio clap studio, studio clap. clap and audience clap and right audience here audience clap yeah. um julie this is very similar in a way to what we do with some of our clients when we help them record content is yeah. and and for me personally it was more about applying some of the copywriting principles that I've learned into creating content. So mm -hmm. what I did was pretty much, okay, let's define what are their main, you know, pillar con content that they're trying to create. And then I use the yep. same questions, right? The what, why, how. Um, but I, I love how you structure, how you have those big pillars. And then it, it, it takes away the friction of, oh, I have to write everything in order, which yeah. like you said, Um, that's how we learn in school, sadly, but, uh, yeah. it, I like your process too, because in a, in a way it, it mirrors that sense of removing the friction, which we talk about a lot inside of the podcast, right? That is what happened to us when we first started podcasting, we had a podcast called Bruce and Bros mm -hmm. and it didn't go anywhere because it had so much friction, right? We had different, yeah. different cameras, bunch of audio, whatever. It was a mess. And it didn't go anywhere because it was just so much friction. Now, when we decided to start content this profit, the first thing we said was, okay, let's, how can we remove the friction? Well, we're just going to go live. And if we mess it up, because what? We deal with it. We build character. Yeah. And, that, and that's what happened, right? We st started staying consistent. And that's what I see here in your approach. You have a very specific framework that helps minimize the friction and then literally what's left for people is just to grab the pen and write or right. their fingers and type in the computer, whatever they or decide their voice. or their voice. Yeah, or exactly. Their, I mean, it depends on it. And I'm not, so I, there's introverts want to write because they have to think of their process ideas in their heads, extroverts process ideas out loud. So, so people who are, and most entrepreneurs, oops, sorry, are, are extroverts. So they're used to just jamming and talking and, and that's the way that they do it, but that's not going to create a readable product. So one of the biggest mistakes that, that entrepreneurs especially are making when they're, when they're writing these books and their book in the weekend and book in a box and all this, all these things that are out there right now is that they're taught that all they have to do is jam on a, on a microphone and yeah. take the transcript and publish it to Amazon. And I've had some really big, I mean, like really recognizable names do that and their books are horrible yeah i don't know that they cared i think they were just putting it out there i mean to the point where they actually had the transcription timestamp still in there it was it was like what oh, what boy. is this and wow. yet i still couldn't throw the book away because it was a book and you don't throw books away right like so there's, <laughs> yeah. there's that there's that little bit of of subconscious like books are super valuable and that's why why they have such a higher perceived value than than any other kind of content really but you've you've got to be able to get the content out And then if either you or a professional editor or somebody who knows how to turn, you know, spoken words into readable written format, that's mm -hmm. what you want to publish, not, not the transcripts. Yeah, absolutely. Absolutely. I, I'm just going to say another similar similarity. I feel like I'm just like promoting or, 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 uh, or service right here, but like <laughs> we're both we, promoting. I mean, yeah, why yeah. not? Why I mean, not? but at the same time, like, <laughs> That, awesome. <laughs> that's what we do uh, with our clients when we got to write the captions, right? Is yep. cool. Let's transcribe what they're saying. And now through some copywriting principles, we add structure mm -hmm. to it, right? We change certain things. We move them around. And now it, it makes sense to the reader as well, instead of just right. copy pasting the, the transcript, transcript right there. And I think that's a very important point too, that you made about the book, you know, being um, kind of like the higher level of pieces of content. Mm -hmm. I don't know how I feel about marketers or people that do that, that they just like, oh, let me just transcribe this, publish it as a book and just put it out there for the sake of, I wrote a book, right? Yeah. Um, oh, and it's a best because you can be a bestseller selling two books on Amazon. <laughs> exactly. And then they sell it for one cent, right? Can, can we demystify that bestseller thing? Because it's something that comes up all the time, right? And it's all like, uh, time. and you know, I, 
this has created like a very negative uh, point of view. Like in my, personally, I'm like, I see a lot of this happening because we're in the space, right? And they're like, hey, yep. top seller, top 1%, blah, 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 all this like le leverage, right? For that maybe for the outside audience is they, they cannot see it. But can, right. we, can we talk a little bit about that process, right? Because at the end of the day, we want to serve our audience. We want to serve the best way possible, right? So they might be consuming some information that when they get their hands into it, they still have timestamps on it. So can mm -hmm. we, like, what are some triggers? What are some things that we might be looking uh, for, like, uh, co for consumption, right? Like if we want to learn from somebody, right? Or I want to make sure that I'm get, gathering the information, the, the, the good information that's going to help me move things forward, right? Not set me back because I cannot fi finish the book, right? What are some indicators right. that people can be looking for um, in a, in a great book in a great author? Like what are some things that we should be aware? So, so I'm a little confused. You want me to, to talk about what they should be looking for in terms of someone to help them or what they should be looking for in terms of a book that they're reading or one that they're writing? Yeah. So let, I mean, we can talk all three, but the first, like uh, as a consumer, right? Like, uh, how do, how do we um, how do you distinguish between the books that you want to really pay attention or the ones you should burn <laughs> <laughs> yeah that uh so, well put okay. fonzie so the ones that 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 you want to pay attention to are the ones that are crazy easy to read mm -hmm. that make sense and that inspire and educate you so i always have inspire educate sell is my favorite framework that i've come up with because like like when you were sitting down at Panda Express and you were so excited about reading Dot Com Secrets because you were inspired to believe that you could do what it was that they were teaching. Mm -hmm. You believed you could do it. So you have to inspire. You inspire by telling stories. Then you have to educate them. And in order to educate them, that's so that they know how to do it. Like, I believe I can do it, but I don't know how. So I'm going to go to your competitor because yeah. they have yeah. they are teaching me, right? So you have to also educate inside that book. And education makes sure that you know how to do whatever it is that you're promising. And it can be a short book. It can be a super long book. It doesn't matter. The, the, the length doesn't matter. What matters is that the information is conveyed in a way that's easy to understand, easy to remember, and easy to pass along. Because a book yeah. is passed along nine times, a good book, mm. before it dies. Wow. So you might, you might sell 100 copies, but you've reached a potential 900 you know, people wow. who, who might hire your services. And then you have to sell because it, it doesn't matter if they believe they can do it. It doesn't matter if they know how to do it. They're not going to do it unless they have resources and support and help and accountability and all the other things that go along with, you know, with learning how to do something new or, or transforming their life. Or, you know, I, I mean, I always say there, you can write a book about any business. So yeah. it could be, you know, making sure you hire my company over somebody else's company, whatever it is. You got to inspire, educate, and sell. And the selling does not have to be an, a sales letter. This is another huge mistake that entrepreneurs make is they take their sales letter and they publish them as books. <laughs> your sales letter is not a book. And, you know, you can sell in your book. And there's lots of great ways to do it. One of my favorite ways is to put your free offer in the first three pages of the book. Because when they're on Amazon, they're always going to look at that look inside feature. Mm. And if they even if they don't buy the book, they're going to see that offer. And they may go to your website and download it anyway. Wow. So good. Right. So there's also back the back of the book. You can put as much advertising in it as you want. If you look at any fiction book, those publishers have 15 other books in there. They're advertising yep. and it's straight up ads. You can put anything in there you want, but if you keep the, the content from chapter one to the end is, is hundred percent educational, inspirational, there's frameworks, there's stories, all of those things are in there. Maybe you mention it here and there that you have a service or that you have a software, but you're not selling it in the main content. Yeah. You've got plenty of opportunities elsewhere to sell it. Yeah. Yeah. I, that That's very powerful. Inspire, educate, and sell. As you were talking about that, I, I'm, I was looking back to certain books and there's some books that I'm like halfway through and I'm like, I already got the main point. They're just, you know, repeating yeah. this same thing over and over again. I'm not inspired at all. I don't see myself, right, the hero's journey. I don't see myself, which is something you guys did great in, in, in Russell's book. You literally see yourself, I don't know, shooting a potato gun and, <laughs> and, and selling things on a funnel. Or at least looking for the components in Home Depot. Yeah, yeah. exactly. <laughs> it, it's, it's, very, it's very powerful. And I'm looking back to certain books and I'm like, whoa, this book was so good. And it's because I exactly. see myself in there and I get inspired first and then I yeah. learn. 
So you inspire with stories and you educate with frameworks. So if you have both of those things, you're golden. Mm -hmm. So, and, and the other thing, and I've totally lost my train of thought, but I'm going to, it's going to come back to me um, about the way that you, I've completely lost it. So go on to another question. <laughs> no, no, no worries. <laughs> I, I know you. I gonna, it was going to be so good. And it'll it was going to be so good. <laughs> no, I know no. you lost it because when you said you inspire with stories and you educate with frameworks, my brother and I were both went like, whoop, okay, time what? to take some notes. <laughs> yeah. Like that was so, that was so good. Yeah. We, we had to write it down. Um, you lost your eternal thought no, too. No, I'm just, I'm just in awe, right? Because. I'm just, yeah, so I'm a I'm a frameworks fan, right? Like I I, yeah. I love it, right? It, and when I made the transition, it was when it, it was easy to duplicate a time after time, right? A lot of the the things that I do on a daily basis here with Bizros or with the other projects that that, that we handle, uh, in the past would take massive mental capacity, and I was like not looking forward to new things because I had to like. I thought I had to figure out again, right? Or figure out a new way. And that was the case with content for us specifically, right? It was like, oh man, do we have to like do this video again? And like, kind of like the writing from the beginning to the, like from the very beginning or writing the intro first and then the rest. And then we were, it's a lot of friction. So when we decided to be like, okay, let's, let's change things up. Right. Um, for us, it meant going live every single day and it's going to have no structure whatsoever. As far as like the full strategy, all we, the goal is to just put it out there. Right. And, and to me personally, the, the framework that helped me a ton was I'm going to share a story of something that happened today or something that I learned today. And then I'm going to apply, like, how does this apply to the business that we're currently doing? The second I decided to follow that every single day, the friction was lifted, right? And yes. we, we were able to, well, the first time we, we did not finish a 45 live, but it was a happy ending because of a happy ending. But then when we did it again, we finished the 45 days completely of life. And a lot of people seem this as a very heavy lift in their publishing thing, right? So for me, I was like, wow, this is the power of a framework. This is a structure that I can follow. And then immediately after, that's how we developed our M2M. How do we produce the, the content after the podcast is done? And it's all these things and you can scale it and you can do these things. So this is why what you're sharing today, I mean, all my, my jaw continues to drop every single time is because I'm seeing myself do this, right? Because I've had enough experience creating a different type of content, but still content that I can see like how these can be so challenging. And, and don't get me wrong, in my head, I'm like, there's like seven books that need to be written, right? Like uh, yeah. fr from personal stories to like frameworks and what we do as a business. And, you know, I don't know when the right moment is going to be, but this is awesome because now I can see myself be like, okay, this is a, a, a road that we can go and explore. And I think that the, the first step for a lot of people is what we share in here, like stories and framework. Like if you can see yourself stories in that framework. story, that's like more than half the battle won. And then you can go out and, and execute. Right. And so we use what's called book blocks to create the chapter structures. And literally all that is, is I, I have kept a list over the years and we've been, I've been doing this 10, 15 years now. And I kept a list of all of the, the, the mm. elements that go into a book chapter. And sometimes there's, you know, the, the little quote at the top. Sometimes there's a story. Sometimes there's a, there's a framework. Sometimes there's a case study. Sometimes there's bullet points. Sometimes there's a picture or something. I mean, there's like 50 of them, right? 50 yeah. different blocks and all you have to do to, and this is another dopamine thing. Okay. If people can, uh, can read through a book and read through one or two chapters, and then they know what's coming up next because they, it's a repeatable system. They get a reward because they figured it out. The reason that, that murder mysteries and mystery things in general are so popular on TV is because they're following along, but they, they're they given just enough clues that they're figuring things out on their own. And when they figure it out on their own, they love it. They just get a cascade of oh, dopamine yeah. and they feel so good. And so uh, the way that you get people to read through a longer piece of content is to have a repeatable structure throughout the chapters. So if you think about any of the books Russell writes, there's always what? It starts, every chapter starts with a stick figure drawing. And then you know he's going to tell a story and he's going to leave an open loop. He's yep. going to tell a personal story. Then he's going to teach whatever it is that he wants to teach using a framework. Then he's going to go ahead and say, well, you know, of course, I, you're going to think that I can do it because I'm Superman. So I'm a, here's somebody else. Here's a case study of somebody else who did it this way and, and had success. Maybe there's some exercises, but probably not. He's not big on exercises. And then 
Um, and then you're going to close out that open loop story and do a chapter preview into the next one. And mm. every single chapter has that same structure. And so after the first couple of, um, you tell me, Fonzie, when you read those stick figure drawings, you had no idea what they were the first time you saw them, right? You had yeah. no idea what it meant. I was like, and then by the end of the cool. chapter, you knew exactly what it meant. And not only did you know exactly what it meant, you could you could just look at the picture. He, he became he Alex became the, exactly. the stick figure. He became the stick figure. <laughs> <laughs> Everybody comes to me and says, what stick figure drawing? I'm like, come on, you can come up with your own style. You don't have to have it be just like that. But the genius of that is that if you look at any book that you really get into, if the, any nonfiction book, this isn't the same with fiction, but with a nonfiction book, if you really are into it and you're really enjoying it and you're really consuming the information and you're and it's it's embedding in your brain, pay attention to are they doing the same components? Is there a story, a teaching, and then a, a summary maybe? Is mm. there you know, story, teaching, summary, story, teaching, summary, story, teaching, summary? You know that that repetition is it's comforting. It's like, I know that I'm going to understand this by the end of the chapter. I know that I'm going to want to read the next chapter because they're going to give me a hook, right? And so that that is exactly what you're talking about with your podcast, being able to remove the friction and to get the same format all the time. You can do that chapter by chapter. And that's one of the first things we do in a book development is we figure out, okay, what is it that you want? And I strongly steer people away from those quotes at the beginning because they're so overused. But a lot of people, they say, I want to have a quote at the beginning of every chapter. I'm like, oh, okay, well, maybe it, what, what, how about if we use your quotes in the, <laughs> the chapter instead of some other famous person, Yeah. right? So using using the repetition is a really powerful way to keep people reading a lot of people think oh i have to have it it has to be different in every chapter it's like no it has to, you have yeah. to have the same basic pieces uh, so that there's a foundation that keeps people reading all the way through to the end my, my geekiness is going through the roof right now because <laughs> here's how i think I, I i think in lego pieces right i think in like this like puzzle pieces that you can just put together so like our our content process is about seven pieces and yeah. uh, like how I've been able to explain it to people and like whenever we started developing with the team. I, I thought you were going to say to muggles. <laughs> okay, Harry <laughs> Potter. Uh, it has uh, been, um, it uh, has been through these images, right? And uh, I, I'm so excited because now we have like those pieces to write the mm -hmm. book. Uh, and we're definitely going to give you a call, Julie. By the way, I think Julie, she did tell us like before the interview happened that the power in her house was going to completely like disappear. That it might so, go off. So yeah. it, I think it just disappeared. But um, just to quick recap, uh, I, I love this, man. The, the chapter blocks, I think is so awesome. Mm -hmm. uh, I want to encourage everybody to go and look into oh. Russell's uh, structure. Russell, yeah, Julie, we're here. Okay, Julie came back. <laughs> Dude, we're, ta we're talking about like your... Uh, we're recapping your, your greatness. Your greatness, but... Oh. I did a really good job because day was so good yeah i was i was telling everybody how um you know i i think in those like puzzle pieces right and then how that really allows to repeat and be consistent right people when we yeah. say hey we have more than 300 episodes in the show that always 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 people drop their jaws They're like what and we're yeah. like well, there's a reason why we've been able to produce so many episodes and have th these amazing conversations and connect with so many people is because there's a framework behind the show on how right. we produce it, the pre, the during, the post. So I love this because people can apply it into their content, into their writing, into their videos, right? Like into the things like it, the, the framework doesn't need to change for the for the outcome uh, that you want to produce. And you can grab these elements and put them into into your final product and make it your own. And the value of, of doing that for your own business, even if you're not creating your own podcast, even if you're not doing a ton of extra marketing, but say like, like me, I'm going on other people's podcasts, right? Yes. I'm doing, I can, I can drop a hat and be on a podcast live and talk and sound amazing because I have inspire, educate, sell. I have question based outline. I have yeah. all these frameworks and I have stories to go with them. And I never, I'm never going to lose them because they're part of me. And other people are always like gobsmacked because they're like, oh my gosh. And I'm like, yeah, but I've been talking about these things for the last, you know, 10 years, but it doesn't mm -hmm. matter. It's still inspiring to people. And it's so if, if you have a business and you want to go out and you want to leverage other people's audiences using their podcasts or their YouTube shows or, or whatever it is, or even if you're just doing ads, having your own frameworks that are yours because everyone's like, well, I, I do the same thing everybody else does. I don't do anything different. Like, no, we, everybody does something different. Yeah, yeah. And you can create a framework that makes you stand apart 
different than everybody else, even if you have the exact same business model, the exact same products and services as everybody else in your industry, having frameworks lets you create a book, lets you create anything else that you want that puts you head and shoulders above everybody else. Ah, that is right. So, we go back to the three piece of differentiation, product, personality, are? or processes, right? You can have a very <laughs> unique product, you can have a very unique personality, or like you mentioned, the process, AKA your frameworks, which I must say that you develop those as you publish. So if you're thinking, oh, well, I don't have any frameworks on my own, I cannot publish. No, that is wrong. Bam, big X. <laughs> you gotta start publishing because as you speak and as you share your message and as to as as you start doing the work, guess what? You're gonna start running across your own frameworks. That's exactly what happened to us. As we started publishing yeah. more and more, we started kind of like putting these pieces together and then realizing, whoa, we got something here. We got the publishing pyramid. Look at that. Whoa, we got something else there. We got the minimal viable content. And and we started discovering all these things that now are part of the the Beast Bros ecosystem and is the things that we teach your clients is the things that we talk about in workshops is the things that we share here on the podcast so don't let not having and I'm doing air quotes here any frameworks of your own stop you from publishing publish yeah, and then and find you those create them I mean mm -hmm. you can create them out of anything and it's I mean I teach a whole workshop on on frameworks we did that in the core story bootcamp we we yeah. did a whole lesson on here's how you do frameworks you know you, it's got to be easy to visualize and so can you draw it like yeah. that's number one. can you draw it? three p's I can draw three p's yeah I can yeah. draw a number sequence once you know there's three steps to this or five you know five pillars to something or there's there's all kinds of different I have a framework called duck mode that I love that we use in <laughs> Annie Greer's book um, where you let water, you know, when you let negative comments slide off your back, like water off a duck's back. And yes. so I just draw a really bad duck, really bad duck. And people <laughs> are like, what is that? But it grabs their attention, right? Because they've never seen that before. Yeah. And I mean, and Annie's, um, she helps people explore quitting alcohol. Mm. And she's got people who have like duck mode tattoos and stuff. Like it, it became a whole thing. It literally was my kids bugging me to go get ice cream in the backseat of the car. And as soon as I would say duck mode, they'd be like, oh, I'll forget it. Mom's never going to shoot. She, that was like saying no, <laughs> but for real, no. <laughs> like the real no. Oh, that's so good. Yeah, yeah. Uh, yeah. We we have one that is called the pee pee board. <laughs> Sorry. I never <laughs> Yeah, and every time we say it, we laugh like kids. So people always laugh and then they remember what the PP board is. So if you want to know what the PP board is, if you're curious right now, let us know. Send us a DM. Um, please send us a... Is it pleasure and pain? Yeah, yeah, let's go. So I, we have a, we have a, uh, I have a, a, a client, Damien Boudreau, who, who teaches car salesmen. He, he taught the uh, number one world record holder how to sell 100 cars a month. This is his oh, book. Oh, wow. And... He, he, he does. It's all about your PP. Uh, <laughs> they always remember it. Always. always. They will never forget pleasure and pain. Yeah. Yeah. yeah, yeah. yeah. Absolutely. Uh, Julie, this has been such a, such a fun conversation. Uh, we have a couple more questions, right? So one is like, what is, um, what is an action point? Where's something that somebody that's thinking about the publishing, whether that's a book, whether that's a podcast, whether that's a blog, like what's something they can do today to get that started? To get that started for themselves? Sure. Yeah. So the first thing you want to do is decide the end. So this is another framework. I have audience purpose and goal. What is your goal? Why are you writing this book or creating mm -hmm. this content? Do you want to sell a product? Do you want to lead people into a webinar? Do you want to, you know, what is it that's, that is going to benefit you? Are you trying to leave a legacy? Are you trying to train people how to do what you do? What is it that you want to achieve? Is it going to bring you money? Is it going to bring you fame? Is it going to bring you freedom? Then you reverse engineer and you go to, to purpose and you say, okay, well, we start with audience. Who's your audience? And you make a very definite, like, who am I talking to? And then for purpose, it's, it's the purpose of the book or the purpose of the content. What is point A and what is point B? Mm. And you want to take people from point A to point B in the content or in the book. So if you can figure out your audience, purpose, and goal, then you go to, to your um, high-level topics that gets you from point A to point B and you – fill in your questions for your question-based outline, you're like 90% there. You, you just shared the, the, the whole secret. And then, you know, for those that are, you know, that don't want to do it themselves, please call Julie. Yeah, just click the link below, connect with her. Like, she's going to rock your world. Get her book. Yeah, get her book. 
get into her world. I think this was awesome. Uh, <laughs> you should share the whole framework, like action point, and then you're gonna see people coming next week. I got my book. <laughs> uh, <laughs> you're gonna you're gonna see Fonzie like I wrote the book. I think it does, but it doesn't. <laughs> no, I love this. In my- the whole publishing is a whole other world of 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 how to get stuff done. Yeah, I mean, yeah. The amount of so do yourself a favor and just uh, just decide that you're gonna self publish, but you're gonna self publish with somebody else doing the work. Like that's what, that's what we do because there's so many mistakes that people make with publishing. Um, and there's so many mistakes they make when they go and they get a traditional publisher. There's very good reasons to have a traditional publisher, but 99.9% of people writing books have no business with that because they're going to lose all the control. They lose all the profits and it's, they, they wonder why they did it. I mean, I've got clients who, who come to me and they have have a $500,000 advance Mm -hmm. and they're still regretting (laughs) that they went with with the traditional publisher. So even if it's just, you know, talking to somebody who does what, what we do and getting, just getting guidance and help because there's, there's so much that's different about an entrepreneurial book and about a book that's tied to a business because you have funnel opportunities, you have upsells, you have different, you have different distribution channels that you have available to you that you just don't even know. You're like, oh, I'm just going to put it on Amazon and then I'll sell, you know, a million copies. Well, if you do, then you won't get any data. You won't get email addresses and you won't upsell anything. You're like, oh, you're right. So yeah, make sure that you're talking to the right people. Yeah. Which is by the way, Julie. So, you know, just (laughs) reach out to her. Um, I've been, I've been behind the scenes in some of this process and coming from a person that had no, 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 like experience or point of view in, in this world, right on the book, uh, on the book. And you've opened my eyes to the whole process and it's very enlightening and I feel very safe in my, in my journey because in the future we're probably going to, you know, reach out, Julie, Hey, what's up? Uh, because um, like you said, it's all about the opportunity, right? And and we've seen some of these friction points that maybe traditional routes or doing it all by yourself can cause, and and it's gonna hinder that your your ability to perform in your business and serve more people. Which is, at the end of the day, you're providing these resources to help more people. So um, I think what you're saying is super important, and relevant. Out, oh, Julie. What yes. what uh, where will you be if you did not publish? Where would I be if I did not publish? Um, I would probably be still writing books. I would be writing more of my own books. That's actually why we're, we're shifting away from the ghostwriting is so that I can write more of my own work and help people in my own way, rather than being that secret, secret behind the curtains person. The ghostly Um, ghostwriter. Yeah. The ghost. I mean, it's, I love writing for other people because I want, I I only work with people that I really believe in their message and and I know that they have brilliance inside of them. And they just can't get it out because they have so much. It's like a log jam in their head. That's what writer's block really is, is it's, it's, you have so many ideas and they're just stuck there. Mm. And so I, I love doing that and I love helping people. I mean, we've got one lady went from food stamps to $10 million business in three years. Like it was crazy how fast that book just took off, but it's, it's, it only goes so far. I can only help so many people doing that. Right. It takes a year plus to get a really good book done that way. People think if I hire a ghostwriter, it's going to be easier. It actually is harder if you have a good ghostwriter because they're challenging you. They're challenging you on your frameworks. They're saying, okay, well, I don't think this audience is going to understand this. Or how is this going to tie to your to your products and services? Is this actually what you want to teach? Or is it something completely different? Russell wrote four books with me, but we ended up publishing two because wow. he would think he wanted one thing. And then like with expert secrets, he literally went on Snapchat and deleted the entire manuscript on live on Snapchat. And, and then he called me and said, Julie, don't kill me, but I just did this. Thing. <laughs> <laughs> I was like, what? Cause he, cause he was like, this is not yeah. the book. This is not the book. This isn't expert secrets. This is yeah. something else that it was just quick and, and easy to put out. And yeah. so then we compl- spent another year and a half completely rewriting and redoing it. And, and Expert Secrets has made more millionaires, I believe, than anybody, yeah. anything else. Like, yeah. Well, thank God you guys did. Book. Yes. It, 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 yeah. It was um, awesome. Where can people find you, Julie? Where can people connect with you? Send you a message. Be like, I want to I wanna learn more. I want to buy your book. I want to connect. Where can people go? So. JulianneEason.com is my primary website. The social media channel I'm most active and actually enjoy being on is LinkedIn. So you can just look up Julianne Eason on LinkedIn. I am on other places, but it's 
yeah, I never know if I'm going to see it. Like <laughs> half of my messages disappear. I'm like, I don't, I don't know. I yeah. always see things on LinkedIn. Yeah. So uh, uh, there, and um, if you want to look into publishing, Thanet House Books is our our publishing house. So awesome. Awesome. Um, I, I do have one question that I've been wanting to ask <laughs> for a very long time, but I didn't want to break the flow of the conversation. How did you get such cool clients? Such cool clients? Yeah. Oh my God. I, I manifest them. I'm like, I just want to make, uh, find amazing people. And they come out of the woodwork. Honestly, they almost always come from referrals. I have this massive guilt complex that I don't do enough marketing and I have for many, many, many years. But I just, I, I teach freelancers. I do teach some ghostwriting um, for, for content people who are content creators, but they want to get into ghostwriting. I, I teach courses on that. And I say, you don't want to have a client base. You don't want to be chasing clients all the time. You want to have a clientele that yeah. is always coming to you and always referring you out to other people. Russell's one of my best, like he, he sends people to me all the time. And, mm -hmm. and, and it's, I'm so grateful for that because it, I get to meet the most amazing people, but yeah. really it's networking and, and talking to people, going to conferences and, and just helping. Like, how can I help you make your book a reality? How can we get, get you out of your own head and get you out of your own way? Here, try questions. It, they work really great. <laughs> oh, so, oh, the questions. That's oh, awesome. That's so good. Thank you. I, th this is a good uh, reinform reinforcement for people that, yeah, sure, of course, they need to do their whole client acquisition activities, but at the same time, focus on properly serving the people that you already are serving and then As, have a, a, a way can. yeah and then have a way for them to refer new clients to you because at and the end have, of the have levels so like if if people come to me wanting copy and then all of all of the people who were my copywriting clients wanted books so that was just the next level and then they all needed to figure out how to publish so then I learned how to publish and then that was the next level of the next thing that I could offer them right. rather than being only the copywriter people and this is this is a content show so I'll I'll share my other framework of content content yeah. hierarchy where people can people can come into a company as a as a freelancer and they can come in at the bottom where they're writing content and they're writing blog posts or whatever and they might be the best writer in the world but if they come in down there they're always going to have to prove themselves before they'll get hired to do the copywriting which is the second level mm. right they'll have to be like oh but i want to write your sales pages and the entrepreneur will be like oh i don't know it's a little bit different than writing a blog post right Ghostwriting is at the top. If you come in as a ghostwriter, every single client I've ever had, if I came in at the top as a ghostwriter and I wrote the book, they wanted me to write everything else for them. Everything. Like, please, can you write my blogs? Can you write my social media? Can you? And I had to say no, because mm. that's not what I do. Yeah. But yeah. if you come in at the bottom, you have to prove your way up. If you come in at the top and you're charging, you know, tens of thousands of dollars, if not six figures, like you're at the top. And then you can go down and you can say, hey, do you need some help with your articles? Hey, do you need some help with those those podcasts, yeah. show note pages? All of those other things you can work your way into yeah. so easily. And they're so grateful for it. It's it's really interesting, the perception yeah. of the value of a book. Uh, so, I want to make the connection with like our service. <laughs> no, I'm going to fight. <laughs> choke the mic, Fonzie. This I'm going to fight This it. is a funny no. joke. It's I, a funny I, joke. Actually, no, you cannot talk. Okay, here we go. <laughs> I just muted him. Like. <laughs> Go ahead, say the say the funny joke. Well, I don't think it's gonna be that funny anymore because I said it was gonna be a funny joke. But whatever. I was gonna say so the song start at the bottom. Now we're here. It doesn't apply for for the value ladder. You gotta start at the top, and now triple down. Wah, wah, wah. <laughs> <laughs> <He's done. laughs> oh, no, I, I like I, I love this Julie because like I we've experienced it right we have a lot of people that that uh create content around our world right and if you come in as a social yeah. social media manager or somebody that handles maybe just one platform and create this post on Canva right the perception is going to be very different for us same thing we come at the top with the whole platform right and we see okay what is the thing that we're doing and then we we go down and that path has has happened many many times right we come in at the top and then people are like hey can you guys handle this and this and this and then it's up to us to kind of decide like is that our lane like can we can we really help you here or not or, or refer to people that are really really good at what they do on the on those areas um and that's the power of a book is it puts you at the top yes whether you're writing it or if you're if you're an industry expert in you or but you have you know the same services as everybody else in the industry if you're the one that wrote the book and you can show that you wrote the book and you actually wrote a good book 
People are going to come to you over everybody else and they're going to want you and only you to do everything for them. Yeah. Yeah. And that's the power that it's not just a lead magnet. It's not just somebody to get into the funnel. It's not just something to do as a free plus shipping gimmick. Like it's legitimately thought leadership that puts you at the top of your entire industry. And if everybody else is also doing books, you you better make sure yours is better and you have to have one. Like if you have competitors that have books, you have to have one period. And you really have to have it be good. And it has to have a certain, um, a certain path that leads people to get actual results and inspires, educates and sells and all of the things that we've been talking about. Yeah. So guys, if you want to be at the top of your industry, if your competitor has a book, you need one, please, 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 please reach out to Julie. Tell her the piece was sent, sent us and uh, tell her also that Fonzie's jokes are no good. <laughs> They're Fonzie awesome. Jokes. They're great, Fonzie but jokes. it got interrupted. You know, the time it wasn't right. It's all good. Oh boy. Oh boy. Oh boy. Uh, Julie, thank you so much. Anything else that you want to add? I, I just always love to tell people that their message matters and their, their business matters. And the, the power of words is you just, you can't overestimate the power of words. It, it, there's so much that you can do and whatever you were told, a lot of those, it was internal, like subconscious blocks and, and resistance that you feel is because somebody told you you weren't a writer. Somebody told you you'll never be successful. Somebody told you, and it might've been a teacher. It might've been a parent. It might've been a grandparent. It might've been a best friend. You'll always be poor was what I heard. Damn. Right. So like everything I did that could possibly lead to my success, I automatically self-sabotaged because I was told and I believed that I would always be poor, which is like crazy, but that's, you know, we form these beliefs in our childhood and so you can do this. You can write a book. You can, you know, be an amazing author. You can be an amazing business owner. You can have all the success you want. And if something's standing in the way, talk to yourself <laughs> and find out what it is because you can, you can overcome that. Yeah. Thank you, Julie. That's so awesome. Fonzie, anything else? Another um, joke? Thank you, Julie. It was great. <laughs> I love this. No jokes. I know. They're a joke. No I jokes. Know, a joke. All right, guys. With that said, thank you so much for tuning into the Contents Profit Podcast. Go ahead and follow the show in your favorite podcasting platform and on social media at BizBrosCo. That is right. And if Julie here help you move one step closer towards writing your book, please don't forget to share this episode and, and leave a five-star review. See ya. Bye, guys.